In volume two of Short Lines and Branch Lines, we'll cover lines in the Hudson River Valley. These lines interchange with main lines to serve as smaller communities and rural areas along the routes. We'll tour Penn Central's Catskill Mountain Branch, Walk Hill Valley Branch, and Upper Harlem Line, followed by the Newark, Susquehanna and Western, and the Erie Lackawanna Northern Branch, taken through the lenses of Frank and Bruce Malone from spring of 1975 into the first month of Conrail. We'll begin on the Catskill Mountain Branch. The branch has its roots in the Ulster and Delaware Railroad, built in the late 1800s. The line carried coal, raw materials, agricultural products, and passengers to and from the rural communities along the route. The New York Central acquired the line in 1932 and operated the line out of Kingston, New York. Regular passenger service on the branch ended on March 31, 1954. The west end of the branch was abandoned from Bloomville to Mickle Bridge, two and a half miles east of Oneonta in 1965. The remaining two and a half mile section to Oneonta was taken over by the Delaware Osego in 1966 for steam-powered excursion operations. The right-of-way was seeded for the construction of Interstate 88 in 1970. In 1968, the New York Central and Pennsylvania Railroads merged to become Penn Central. Service had ended on the five miles of track between South Corroy and Bloomville by the 1970s, but not abandoned. Penn Central would operate the remaining portion until April 1, 1976, when Conrail took over. Since the branch was not included in the USRA's plan for consolidation, Conrail would operate the line under subsidy for only six months until shippers could make other arrangements. In the following segments, we'll view the line between just outside Kingston and South Courtright, New York. By now, there was essentially only two customers remaining on the branch. Lutz Feed in Roxbury, New York, and Agway in Stamford. The final freight left Kingston September 28th and took six days to deliver the final loads and bring them back. So let's start with our ride with an eastbound with the 8104 in the lead going on a branch in spring 75 from Stamford, New York to Kingston. Here the 8104 approaches Route 28 crossing just west of Shandaken, New York. Notice the rusty rail. It's getting that the branch is in bad shape. Here he crosses Route 28 with a good old GP38 for power. It actually was a GP38-2. There was no set schedule to operate the trains. They had a criteria that when 10 cars was accumulated for the Catskill branch in Kingston, they call a crew for next day. This is at the Basin Road Overpass in West Hurley, New York. He's, I'd say he's doing about 15 to 20. The cars don't rock there. Here again, we flag another crossing in Big Indian, New York. They only got half the train. They let the other half lay while they come up here doubling the hill. It's a 3% grade to High Mount, New York. So he only has the typical GE four cars. Here he comes westbound on a sweeping curve just east of Big Indian, New York. He has a respectable train here, about 15 cars, including the caboose. Now we're going to go along the Walk Hill Valley Branch. Again with a U-Boat 2563 and a switcher. The switcher is for Maybrook, because by this time the New Haven is landlocked after Poughkeepsie Bridge had a devastating fire. Too bad. Everyone on the Penn Central was surprised. 
the switcher for Maybrook, it's going to be dropped at Montgomery, and the Erie Lackawanna will deliver it to Maybrook Yard after they switch out. Here it comes the freight through Wallkill now. Only a handful of cars. Here's the Route 208 overpass at Walden, New York. Now we switch over to the Upper Harlem Line. Here comes the freight to Wingdale at a respectable speed. Might be going about 40 there, judging by this. 